Today I'm going to share a single time management principle that gave me the freedom to choose my life and it's not another productivity video, it's a whole other concept entirely. If you are ticking along from day to day and you're feeling rushed by all the things on your to-do list, feeling like you're constantly bombarded by urgent things so you never have time to get to the important things, then this video is for you. You, me, everyone on this planet, we have 168 hours a week. And within that week, there are things we must do. So we have to sleep, we have to eat, shower, clean our homes, we have to look after our kids, we have to go to work, we have to earn a living. And unfortunately, more often than not, time for ourselves gets lost in all of that. So I learned something transformational at the age of 27, and I really would like to share it with you today. So it's like time management, but with like magic, fairy dust of real freedom sprinkled all over it. And it's not just about being productive, it is about feeling fulfilled and free to do the things that make you happy or to give you time to recover. So here we go. So what is this thing that I'm talking about? I'm talking about freedom. We all want it, but no one makes time for it because we tell ourselves we don't have enough time. <laughs> freedom is a practice. Freedom is not doing what we want and fuck the rest of the world. Some people think that. Freedom is actually to pursue the things that fulfill you, that comes from knowing what those things are and knowing how to make space for them in your life. <laughs> yeah. So there's this matrix that many productivity professionals use, like Ali Abdal and Stephen Covey. It's the quadrant system. It's dividing any task into four different areas, and it's based on two things. Firstly, importance, or how truly vital it is that this thing gets done. And then secondly, the urgency, or how quickly or immediately this thing must get done, or else some bad shit will happen. Okay, so the quadrants go like this important and urgent. These are vital things that also must happen right now, like paying an overdue bill or meeting a deadline or getting someone to the ER if they hurt. Then there's important, not urgent, vital things, but they don't have time limits on them and you don't have to do them right now, so we'll talk about those in a minute. Then there's urgent, not important. These are things that seem like they're important, they have to happen now, but actually they don't make a big difference in your life like responding to an email the second you get it, or stuff about other people's lives and other people's problems, people pleasing stuff. And then finally, not urgent, not important. Things, these are things you don't have to do at all. They don't have to happen at all. They really will make no big difference in your life. And in short, they're just time wasters. In this video, I'm fo focusing on quadrant two, which is important stuff, but it's not urgent. So as someone who's experienced this for many years, myself, I believe that we have our understanding of what's important backwards. And it's shifting our priorities all up the wazoo, okay? It's taking away our freedom to live well. But why? Guilt, guilt, guilt. We feel guilty about not spending enough time with our families or doing this thing or not doing that thing. We are determined to be perfect and not to fail at anything because our mind, in our minds, success only comes from doing everything at 100%. Getting our homes 100% of the way clean every day, spending 100% of enough time with our families every day, being 100% perfect to that neighbor ne <laughs> next door, um, giving 100% of our effort and energy when we go into work every single day. This is impossible. Being this good being this perfect, it's impossible. No one can do it. So many of us, what we do is we move through that to-do list every day. We focus on what's coming up next because that's what's urgent and important. That's what the productivity guys tell us to do. But even if we get it all done by the end of the week, we reach there and somehow we still feel like we didn't do enough or we just get to do it again, like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And our tank just gets more empty through each cycle that repeats. Why? Because we're missing one vital ingredient. We are not making time to be human. 
we are not taking care of ourselves. We're not giving ourselves recovery time because it falls into the important but not urgent quadrant. So we skate right over it. For some of us, it doesn't even register as important in the first place. Yes, I am talking to you. Yes, I am. And of course, daily life is important. I'm not saying it isn't. Paying the bills, cleaning our homes occasionally, caring for our kids. These are all important things. But they can also get automatic. And if you don't create space for the important things that are not urgent, if you don't purposefully create space for you to fill those deeper needs that you have as a human being, self-care space or the recovery space, then you will just never do it. You'll always be focusing on urgent. So goals, dreams, growth, these were not concepts that I understood because I was not taught any of them. Being able to structure your times so that you can care for yourself was not a concept that I understood. So I became frazzled. My energy going in a thousand different directions because everything that was urgent felt important and looking after myself didn't feel like it was important at all. So when I turned 27 and I learned about the concept that would later change how I managed my time, my energy and my life and myself forever. But first I suffered for another 10 years until the penny dropped. So the concept that changed my life Imagine you're at work. When you are at work, there's some kind of structure to the day. So whatever you do, you, whether you work nine to five, you work shifts or you work for yourself, there is hopefully a structure to your day and you prioritize what you're going to get through in this limited time, right? There's also someone at work who decides what that structure is, whether it's the manager or the CEO, they decide the company's strategy, they decide the direction that things will go in and where everyone will put their, their energy, right? So in other words, they decide what's important. And here's what I want you to know if there is nothing else you take from this video today. In each of our lives, we are the CEO. We are the manager. We create the structure. And that means that we can decide what are the things that we should focus on? What is our strategy? Where would we like to end up? Cool. Yeah, then we know we need to make time to work towards that outcome. And with only 168 hours per week at our disposal, we must let go of the things that seem really important and urgent so that we can create space for those hours to go for our dreams, our goals, our visions. And it's about productivity and time management, sure. But it's also about our spirit. To facilitate freedom to pursue these things, the self-care and the recovery, the goals, the dreams, you need a structure that makes the time. And the woman who opened my eyes to this idea when I was 27 years old, she called it constructive freedom, which means using your free time in a way that is most constructive to you. In the course of my life, I've taken it a step further and I for myself call this now structured freedom. So like I said at the top of the video, freedom is a practice. It is deliberate. You have to do it. It doesn't just happen. <laughs> so it's structured freedom is the way to that for me. Structured freedom says I have a structure in my life. There are non-negotiable things that I must do. Kids, job, house, groceries, making money, shit like that. These form the structure, the framework of the necessary things that must happen in my life. But the spaces in between, those are for my freedom. Those are for my recovery. There is always time left. And it's that time where we put deliberate effort towards freedom. We find what we put in these spaces by analyzing what we need and treating those things seriously. So as an example, I have a very structured life. I'm not saying you should, but this is what I do. I wake up at 4.20 a.m. every day. I do my morning routine. So I make some coffee. I take my dogs for a walk. I meditate. I get ready. I go to work. Then I come home at lunchtime. I see my dogs. I eat my pre-prepared meals. 
Um, and when I get at night, I do the same thing. So I make sure things are in order. I do the necessary things and I've predefined what they are because then I don't have to make those decisions every day. And I've already made them for myself, right? I've decided what I'm doing. And then I spend my time on my freedom projects like this channel. I read, I dream, I create content. I create strategies to work towards my goals. That's 15 or 20 hours a week. So how do I fit that in? I don't clean my house every day. I don't load my dishwasher every day. My lawn sometimes gets a little bit too long. I fold my laundry in front of the TV in the one hour that I allow myself to watch, if I feel like it. Because I recognize that perfection and these tasks are not important. Having a tidy home instead of a pristine one is enough. Having clothes washed but not folded it's enough, but having no time to do the things that fulfill me, that give me energy, that help me to move towards my goals or help me recover, that's not enough. That's not an option. One is more important than the other. And you can let the laundry go for a little bit if it means that you'll have time to work on that book or watch that show or go surfing or rest. If you have time to feed your soul little by little so you can walk towards freedom, right? I see it like this. If I'm in charge of my life, which we all are, then I decide what I want my life to look like. I decide the structure. I decide the routine. And I make room for other people and other things in my life because they're important to me. But I'm also flexible based on my own decision making not someone else's. I remember that I am just as important. You are just as important. So when you assess your needs and make time for the things that actually feed your soul and fill your tank, fulfill your needs, that's where the magic arrives. Instructed freedom. <laughs> so here's today's affirmation that I would really like to offer you. Say to yourself, I have enough time. I make time for myself and the structure in my life because what I need is important. And repeat it. Put it in places so that you can see it every day. And when those moments of decision come, choose you. Remember, this is in pursuit of the things that you want to do or become. So if you're having a little trouble figuring that out, I have a video over here that you can watch to discover your future and where you'd like to go and what you're moving towards, okay? I love you.